How's it going everybody? My name is Warner Fields with Fields of Profit. I'm a six-figure Amazon seller and full-time student. Today I'm going to be diving into Scout IQ, which if you haven't heard of it before, it's an app that lets you check the prices of books against the prices on Amazon. And it's a database-based app, so it's super quick, and you're able to scan through shelves at the thrift stores and estate sales super quickly, and it's going to allow you to scale up your book business. And it's a little bit tricky at first to figure out what you're looking for. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of my triggers that I use on Scout IQ, and then also show you what to look for. Or sometimes it'll show that you need to accept the book, but really you need to reject. So I'll show you some simple things to look out for so that you're buying less studs. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Before we get started, with today's video I just want to say that only about 15% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed so if you are not subscribed go ahead and click the subscribe button right down below I'd really appreciate it it's free and you can always unsubscribe thanks So the first thing you're going to have to do if you don't already have Scout IQ is go to scoutiq.co or you can click the link down in the description that's going to give you a two week free trial and then you're going to go over here and you're just going to make an account and as you can see it's only about $44 a month or live is only $14 but I strongly recommend that you have database mode because it's going to pull that data way quicker. You're going to make back this $44 on your first trip to the thrift stores that day. So just for the major beginners here, I'm going to go ahead and dive into Scout IQ and show you what the simple aspects of it mean. So I'm going to grab this book I've got off my shelf here. I'm going to scan the barcode and then you're going to see some things right off the bat. So rank is going to be from 1 to about 25 million, somewhere around there. Uh, you're going to want to stay below 3 million usually. Um, but the closer to 1 you are, the better. And then the, the triggers are going to do all the hard part for you. E-score is the number of days within the last 180 days that it has sold. That doesn't mean that it's only sold 148 times in this case, but that it's sold on 148 unique days. So it could have sold 100 times on one of those days. The trade-in value, in this case it doesn't have a trade-in value, but if it does, it's going to show you the trade-in value that Amazon would be willing to give you for it. The left column, where it says all, is the merchant fulfilled offers for the used books. The next column over is FBA used, and that's going to be what we're worried about. These are the ones that are coming from the FBA warehouse. And then you've got new. The all is going to be merchant fulfilled, and then FBA is going to be new as well. You don't need to worry about those unless you're working directly with the publishers of the books. Otherwise, you are not abiding by Amazon's TOS. You can also see the used buy box and the new buy box on the bottom. Those are the prices that when a customer goes to the page for that book, when they press buy used, this is the price that it's going to give them. And then if they don't click on any other offers, then this is the offer they're going to be doing. They're going to be buying this 1999 one right here. Sell back your book right down here. This green box is going to tell you what the sell back your book company is willing to pay you for your books. Sometimes you're going to want to use this for books that are uh, really low profit or if you get a bunch of free books you're able to send those in and they can sometimes give you like a quarter or something for stuff you're gonna throw away anyway the, the first circle on the left is this is the custom link circle you're able to link that to any link you want it to I use it to link it to Keepa the second one is helium 10 we're gonna go ahead and click on that right now and as you can see it's gonna just show you a simple uh, sales pattern sales data and then the third one is live so when you download your data it's going to pull that downloaded data until you download it again, right? But if you press live, it's going to update it and give you the current prices on Amazon. This fourth one right here is Book Scouter. This is what the other buyback companies are willing to pay for your books. And then the fifth circle down here is the actual Amazon listing. It's going to go ahead and let you open up the Amazon page. It's going to let you scroll through all the offers. Uh, you're able to check notes and stuff like that. Sometimes I use that when you're when you're seeing a set or something you're not sure on. Maybe uh, you want to make sure that you have the right thing. So sometimes you can use those notes on the Amazon page to say, uh, you know, the seller might say has all four books or has two books when you might be missing something or something like that. And then the scan button down on the bottom is going to let you pull up an ISBN or it's going to let you scan just the numbers. So as you can see, I'm going to just hover it over the numbers here and then it still works. And then you can also do a cover search, which doesn't often work. I've found usually stick to just the numbers and the barcode as sometimes you might have a book where the back of it has a sticker over the barcode. So in that case, it will be pretty good to use the inside cover with the ISBN. So as you can see here, this is just an Amazon uh, tag there. 
but if you open up the front cover and press the ISBN option, you can page through here and then open up on the ISBN and then that's a lot faster than having to peel off that sticker. So now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the custom triggers that I actually use. The app does come with the default triggers, but I like to edit them a little bit. Um, I want to go a little bit higher than the defaults were. So you can go ahead and pause the video right here if you want to copy these and then uh, modify as you see fit. But this is what I've done for probably the last six months to a year and it's been working well for me. The main thing is that once books are down here where they're selling a little slower, you want to make sure that it's comparing to the first FBA slot or even a used merchant slot because down here when the books are selling less, you're way less likely to find a customer who's willing to pay the premium for the prime bump. The triggers also let you build in a buy cost. Usually where I'm sourcing, it's almost always a dollar and then I just modify it down if I need to. And then your FBA cost per pound, you're going to learn this over time. For me, it's about 30 cents when I do small parcel, which is what you're going to be doing from the start. And then you're also able to set triggers for DVDs, VHS, music, and video games. I do use video games pretty often too. Uh, you can go ahead and check these out if you're interested in this. Uh, anything above like 25 to 30,000 is a pretty slow mover in video games. So you want to treat it way differently than books. And also the app does not use eScore for video games. So here's those books triggers once again. Uh, if you have any questions about these triggers or any suggestions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm happy to talk to you about that for sure. So now I've got three books that I've pulled out to show you some specific examples of things to look out for. This first book is a pretty clear winner. As you can see, the merchant prices on the left are a minimum of $11, and then the buy box is at $15.59, and the lowest FBA is at $13. We're going to go ahead and live search this one too. So as you can see, the price has gone down a little bit on this low FBA, but since the e-score is so high, it's at 149, we're likely to be able to command a higher price than that because that offer is going to sell out. You can see as we click through the Amazon listing, there's only one seller with five ratings at that $11 price point, and then it's pretty much 14 to 16 from there. So you don't really have to worry about it selling down here because that's where the merchant prices are. With a book that sells this fast, you're going to get a prime bump of at least three, four dollars on this. So you're definitely okay to think about selling it at 14, even up to this $16 price point here. The next example is one where you might not actually be able to get the price that it's pulling. So in this case, the low merchants are at about 840, which is not super low. Um, that's a, probably a good sign. If it's at six, seven dollars or lower, then that's probably a sign that you should be a little careful. But in this case, it's at eight. So it's probably going to be profitable no matter what. But as you can see, it's pulling that 1540 price. So that's just something to watch out for. As you can see, there's also another offer here at 840. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that there's not a lot more offers at that 840 because we might not be able to get that super high price there. So we're going to go ahead and click through to the Amazon listing. And as you can see, it looks like they've sold out. This is going to be no problem. But for the future, if you see a book with really low merchant offers, like this is a pretty common thing where it'll be a whole bunch of six and seven dollar offers. And then the FBA price will be like thirty dollars, the e score of 20, which means it sells once a week or so, then you're probably not going to be able to command that high of a prime bump since everyone's just going to be able to buy it for seven and just wait a couple days. And then this last example here is a pretty cl clear reject. These merchant prices are down here at seven, like I was talking about. The e-score is super high, so in this case, we could maybe command a prime bump that would give us a, like a $10, $11 price point. But it looks like there's quite a few sellers at this eight range in the nine, 10, so it's not looking super great. Um, as you can see, we're negative one profit at $8, so it'd be about a dollar profit, even if we could sell it for $10 here, which is possible, but it's probably not really worth your time to make a dollar because there's a lot of work involved in prepping this book. So I hope this little video was useful. It showed you some things to look out for when you're out scouting books. Be sure you're always vetting your accepts. Make sure that the price hasn't gone down. Make sure that the FBA price isn't unrealistically high. Just think like a regular consumer, you know? So if you're shopping for a book, it's pretty slow seller. You're, you know, if you can buy it for $8 or if you can buy it for 30 to get it like three, four days cheap, faster, which are you going to do, you know? So you really want to just think like a consumer. Don't really think off the, the, off the data sometimes. Think like a consumer. As always, I'd appreciate a like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, drop any questions down in the comments and then click that link down below if you want to get a two-week free trial. That's going to do it for this video. Thanks, guys.